This week with Baltimore Ravens fans has been a lot of gloom and doom. But you can understand why because the Baltimore Ravens are sitting in some very unfamiliar territory at 0 and 2. It's like we could take if the Ravens were 1 and 1. We'd be like, "All right, cool." And especially if the Ravens were 2 and 0, we would be like, "All right, great. Cool. Let's get it, baby." But they're not. And what makes it worse is that with both losses, they have literally came right down to the wire. So, a better decision here, a better play there, then we could easily be talking about 2-0. and oh. But it's not about what ifs in the National Football League. It's about what is. And what is what it is is that the Baltimore Ravens have not won a single game. That sucks. A lot of people upset, frustrated. Like, what's going on with these Baltimore Ravens? There's been a lot of conversations about this and that guy getting fired, this and that guy getting traded. And they're not going to stop. They, they're certainly not going to stop. But... We could use a positive update with our Baltimore Ravens. We could use some news to get us very, very excited, very, very happy. And it's something that I see every single video in the comment section, people asking about it. Uh, I have gotten so many DMs and messages on Twitter of people asking me about it. I don't know. But what's the status of Keaton Mitchell? What's happening with Keaton Mitchell? What is an update with Ravens running back Keaton Mitchell? Because the world wants to know. John Harbaugh. In his press conference during the offseason, he said that Keith Mitchell was going to be out for a while. When Keith Mitchell first got injured, so many Ravens fans, before Harbaugh even said anything, they figured, oh, that's going to cut into next regular season. And y'all were right. So a lot of people at the end of the ball, they got a lot of knowledge. So shout out to y'all. But we didn't get an update of Keith Mitchell from... Ravens offensive coordinator Todd Munkin We didn't get an update on Keaton Mitchell From Ravens running back Derrick Henry We didn't get an update on Keaton Mitchell From Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson We didn't get an update on Keaton Mitchell From Ravens head coach John Harbaugh We got an update on Keaton Mitchell From Keaton Mitchell And he didn't say much But what he said was enough Keaton Mitchell said it's a Blessing to see 20 plus miles per hour again Whew Hashtag in due time Thank you So seeing that What that means What that lets us know Is that Keaton Mitchell Is reaching some nice speeds right now Keaton Mitchell Is running running very fast Right now Keaton Mitchell is that much closer To being back Right now And he can do so much for this Baltimore Ravens team He can bring so much to this Baltimore Ravens offense as he did last year. Because see, with Keith Mitchell, this dude, he ain't need too many touches to get going. Keith Mitchell is like the exact opposite of Derrick Henry. And this is not a shot at Derrick Henry, so do not take it as that. But with Derrick Henry, we know in order to really get him going, he need a bunch of touches, a bunch of carries and whatnot. With Keith Mitchell, you give him five, six carries, he'll be at like 150 yards off of that alone. Because he was just so explosive. In the running game But get this The Baltimore Ravens I remember last year They started involving him In a passing game too And guess what He killed it in that as well So if the Baltimore Ravens Could get Keith Mitchell back We don't have a timetable We don't have an update As far as exactly when He'll be returning But the fact that he's running That fast right now That lets us know He's close He's close And to me that lets me know, in my opinion, again, I'm not a doctor. Even though us Ravens fans, we don't seen enough injuries and whatnot, so we, we all feel like we, we are doctors. But if he's running that right now, then that lets me know that he could possibly be back sooner rather than later now. But one thing, while he did say he's running over 20 miles an hour, which is great, that means he's just, choo, that's straight line speed. How's his cutting doing? Because that's something that he'll have to get back. Um, because it, it's easy to run in a straight line, but how can you cut? How ag agile are you? Did you get that bounce back all the way yet? So, of course, it's, it's going to be a process, so it's something that we're going to have to be very, very patient with, but the thing about Keith Mitchell's injury is that we expected him to be back in the second half of the season. We expected it to take a while for Keith Mit Mitchell uh, to return to the Baltimore Ravens lineup. So whenever he does come back, we're going to be happy. We're going to be excited. We're going to be hyped, man, like for real. But it's going to be a process. But it's definitely a process that we're all willing to wait for because we know what the results can be.
So Team Keep It Clean, we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. If you would like to be a part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send your questions directly on Patreon. If you would like to join the Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Real quick, before you continue, make sure you subscribe to the channel as y'all have been a lot. Make sure you leave a like on the video as y'all have been a lot. And make sure you turn the notifications on so anytime we drop anything, you will be notified. Let's get into it with my first question from our guy, Jonathan. He said, hey, Engraving and Flock Nation, hope everyone is doing okay. We're doing pretty good. I appreciate you. He said, last time I wrote a long one, but no, I, everyone that you write is usually long. Well, when I saw your first and last name, I said, oh, yeah, we in for one right now. But it ain't no problem. It ain't a bad thing. But anyway, he said, last time I wrote a long one, but we will try to keep this short. <laughs> he, he tried, but... Anyway, continue. He said, last time I broke down all the pass rushes and defense, uh, defensive disruptors that we will face this in the coming weeks. And so far, our offensive line is getting destroyed. We all know uh, offensive line is a problem, yet I feel like the head coach, John Harbaugh, is a major problem of them all. Most successful teams in the NFL all have a head coach who can provide some X's and O's concepts to their winning teams. Let's look deeper. Todd Monken is in the second year of being offensive coordinator. Zach Orr is a rookie defensive coordinator. I watch every single Ravens game and practice videos. Not once do I see Harbaugh with a play calling sheet in his hands. Better yet, from what I see uh, as the coordinators have 100% control of game management and play calling. What's our head coach Harbaugh's uh, specialty? Hmm. Special teams and he's a great motivator to the team. Yeah, not enough. Teams are getting smarter. We are a contending team. We have a two-time MVP Lamar Jackson and six all-pro players. A lot of the games we have lost in the past and season go back to coaching and discipline. I I'm glad that you put that in there too. Because a lot of times we can say, oh yeah, it's because of coaching this and that. But you put in discipline. That's huge. And that's key right there. But anyway, continuing. He said, I don't think we will see another Lombardi trophy unless we fire John Harbaugh. I was reading an article by Matt Sidney with five potential uh, coach, coaching candidates. Uh, Matt Campbell, Kellen Moore, Aaron Glenn, Bill Belichick, and Ben Johnson. Personally, I think we should look into Bill Belichick as Ravens' new coach. Here's why. Oh, man, y'all, y'all, like, really? A lot, a lot of y'all that really will want Bill Belichick. Again, I'm still not all the way on board, but let me hear what you got to say. He said, number one, he's very good at in-game adjustments. That part is very true. That's, that's correct. So I, I can't argue with you on that. He's true to X's and O's, especially on defense. Yeah, he's a defensive coach. I'll continue. He said he, had had, he has had success with two tight ends on his belt with Gronk and Hernandez and 12-man personnel concepts. Okay, yeah, that's true. And I believe 12-man personnel is with two tight ends and two wide receivers and one running back. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'll continue. He said he will bring a system that Ravens organization needs. Given how successful Bill Belichick is, imagine him walking in as the team's new head coach and he's having a team meeting knowing he has – one, a top five quarterback in the NFL. Two, a top five running back in the NFL. Now, wait a minute, because uh, King King Henry, Derrick Henry's year deal is really a one year. It's a two year deal, but it's really a one year deal. But anyway, uh, so if 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 big if if Harbaugh was to get fired, or if he was to step down, whatever, um, if Harbaugh was to move on, then. Um, yeah, King Henry might not even be here. But anyway, continuing, he said a needed help. Uh, a needed help offensive line, but promising players like Linda Bond, Voorhees, Rosengarten, and veteran Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley might be gone too. He probably will be gone. So, but anyway, continue. He said, with triple crown defense from last year, which I feel we got better in the right personnel to repeat. It ain't starting off like that, but hey, it ain't about how you start, it's how you finish. <laughs> But he say, uh, with defensive line, Matabike and Travis Jones, who both are beasts. Linebacker Trent Simpson, which is a huge upgrade from Patrick Queen. Let's see. I I'm still let's let's see. Let's see. Let's see how he does, man. He he's starting off good. But let let's see. It's all about consistency. And he said, uh, away, a job old Kyle Vinoy, uh, which can apply pressure at ease. The DBs, he got the best safety trio. Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams, and Eddie Jackson. With the addition of Nate Wiggins, veterans, uh, Stevens, and Marlowe. I don't think he's going to have Marlon Humphrey next year. And Brandon Stevens, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, he said he would have a field day. Better yet, this would probably be his best personnel ever, player-wise, uh, he ever had in his coaching career ever. My question to you is, would you make this move now before it's too late? Um, if the Ravens' plan was to move on from Harbaugh and, and um, hire Belichick to be the next head coach, they, I think they would bring him in now. It would be wise of them to bring him in now, um, as an 
offensive assistant. They, they, you know how Ravens, they be making up these job titles and stuff. They could do that with Bill Belichick and be like, oh, yeah, this is our new whatever. Or defensive assistant or assistant head coach. Y'all know how they do. They could do that. And then Harbaugh left, stepped down, whatever. Then they could bring on Bill Belichick. But still, I'm just, you made a lot of good points. But I'm, st- I'm just still not sold on Bill Belichick being that guy. Anyway, he said, um, if it was up to me, I would make this change effective immediately. If there's any hope, because this 0-2 start is not looking good. See, that's I think that's easier said than done. Because think about that. When you hire a new head coach, that's why when teams hire new head coaches, they do it in the offseason. Why? Because the coach has to bring a whole new regime, a whole new vibe, a whole new playbook, a whole new everything. They want to bring on their coaching staff. They want to bring on their offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators. They want to bring on their stuff. So... It's not something that – it ain't so easy to do it uh, at the beginning of a season, in the third week of a season. It's, it's not that easy. So if this was to happen with Bill Belichick or whoever it may be, then it would have to be in the off season. Next question came from my guy here. He said, hey, Graven and team, keep it clean, members. Uh, I hope all is well with everyone. Appreciate you, man. Uh, after two weeks, the Ravens have me torn. I mean, Mike McDonald's defense is looking good. That's right. Instead of giving him the Ravens head coaching job, they let him go to Seattle, shaking my head. Well, uh, at least J.K. Dobbins is killing it. Nope. He is running for the other hardball in Los Angeles, shaking my head. Now, um, I would have preferred if they would have kept Mike McDonald. They did. Now, with J.K. Dobbins, they did not make the wrong decision with J.K. Dobbins. With the Ravens, he was always hurt. Marlon Humphrey, which I appreciated because I'm not used to hearing stuff like this from players, especially players that played with these other players. Marlon Humphrey even said it himself. Like, he said that J.K. told, told him, like, oh, Ravens should have kept me. But Marlon said, you were, ba- you were d- barely hobbling around on one leg when you were here. So Marlon acknowledged that J.K. was always hurt, too. So it's something that we all knew, but that's why I say Ravens did not make the wrong decision. J.K. wanted to get re-signed, and they didn't re-sign him. He was doing his in-house, his holding, I mean. And then uh, first game of the season, he ended up getting hurt and missing the whole year. Ravens did not make the wrong decision with J.K. But anyway, continuing. Uh, He also said, um, all of this is to say that it seems like the players aren't necessarily the problem and the coordinators aren't the problem. Harbaugh is the problem. Now, I've been shouting this for years. You have. Can't deny that at all Because you've been sending in questions for years Which I appreciate Much love to you my friend But you've been talking about Harbaugh for a long time Anyway continuing He said um, He will always cost us Two to three games With bad decision making And game management uh, That there was no reason For us to lose When Harbaugh was hired He was young and forward thinking Things didn't always go our way But he was willing to adapt And listen to others And the Ravens won the Super Bowl Now with that mm, He was willing to listen to others Yeah I mean You, you got a Ray Lewis You, you want to go against Ray Lewis Hey Reed. And you the new guy, and you the head coach now. And they should respect you because you you the leader of the team. But, yeah, yeah. anyway, continuing. Uh, he said that was in 2012 and possibly the root of the problem with this franchise. Since the Harbaugh's ego has gotten so big that he believes he doesn't need to listen to anyone and is the smartest person in the room, he's no longer an inspiring young man. He's an old dog that doesn't want to learn new tricks. Uh, yesterday, Torrey Smith posted on his ex account. Oh, I, I did see Torrey Smith going in on Ravens fans saying, oh, Harbaugh should get fired. And Torrey Smith was like, oh, if, if, if Harbaugh got fired, then there would be, I think he said, 31 other teams lining up to sign something like that. You know how a lot of people say that. That has been a big thing that a lot of people say. Who, and if people want to hold on to Harbaugh, that's cool. If people want to let Harbaugh go, that's cool. Cause it's cool either way. But I know a lot of people use that. They say, oh, if Harbaugh was to get fired, he would have a job in 10 seconds. And it's like, okay, cool. That's great. That's great. That's amazing. So it, it doesn't have to be this ugly breakup or anything like that. Both parties could split and it could be amicable. Anyway, continuing. He said, um, yesterday Torrey Smith posted on his ex account that Ravens fans need to calm down a little. It's no time to panic, which I agree. Then he tweeted that there are 31 teams that would kill to have John Harbaugh and he wanted fans to name him a better leader. There he goes. So that's what he said. Uh, he said, and as we aren't in the locker room, uh, yeah, as we aren't in the locker room, I can't say how good of a leader Harbaugh is. But I told him I'll name all the coaches off the top of my head who I'd rather have than John Harbaugh at this moment. Andy Reid, Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan, Mike Tomlin, Dan Campbell, Todd Ball, Bowles, Mike McDonald, Mike McDaniel, uh, Antonio Pierce, Sean McDermott, McDermott, and Jim Harbaugh. Ooh, that's a list right there. That's 11 coaches off the top of my head that are better than him with a question. And like Tory said, there are only 31 other teams. So... He's not even in the top 33% of coaches in the league. Man, you already put uh, Antonio Pierce over him. That, ooh, that was fast. I know he was an intern coach last year. Now he's the official head coach. Boy, you, you shot him up quick. And Mike McDaniel, Mike McDaniel too? 
But anyway, he said, I think we need someone young and innovative that knows X's and O's and can scheme the ball into our playmakers' hands. I'm tired of having one of the most talented teams year after year, only to come up short because John Harbaugh thinks he's the smartest guy in the room and won't do what everyone else sees as obvious. That part right there, um, that has been an issue with the Ravens for a while. Uh, it, it's these obvious fixes. It's these simple fixes. And it's like what's crazy about it is that We'll, as fans, we'll be shouting about these fixes for a long time. For a long time, long time, long time. Ravens won't do them. Then Ravens start incorporating them, and boom, they end up working. Anyway, he said, just keep it simple and do what works. Please tell me that I'm not overreacting and that others have been seeing this too. Oh, they have. Uh, the refusal to run King Henry. The refusal to start Rosengarden and leave him at right tackle. The refusal to bench Falele. Basically, the refusal to listen and adapt. I hope Steve Bishotti is hearing this because our team is slowly becoming the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. You know what's crazy? Is that we uh, Ravens have obviously had Super Bowls more recently than them, but the recent Ravens are, are very similar to Dallas Cowboys, and it sucks to say, but it's the truth. Super talented teams, good quarterback, talented teams. We have different kind of talent than they do because they they invest more offensively, but still, super super talented teams every year. High hopes, nothing, nothing. So, yeah. Anyway, um, well, nothing as far as Super Bowls. Well, I mean, Ravens and Lamar got a couple of MVPs and what, but as far as Super Bowls, we ain't got nothing to show for it. But anyway, um, he said, uh, I hope Steve Bashadi is hearing this because our team is slowly becoming the Dallas Cowboys and our head coach is quickly becoming Jeff Fisher. That's the end of my rant. Whoa. Next question came from my guy, Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? What's up, Howard? He said, I saw the Harbaugh video you posted. I'm in that Harbaugh should have been fired during Flacco's dark years. I've said that on your channel several times. You have. Uh, this offensive line situation is the worst. I would just start being Cleveland at right guard and, oh, Josh Jones at right tackle. Okay, that's an interesting one right there. You didn't see nobody saying that. That's interesting. So you would start him over Rosengarden. Okay, cool. He said, um, because what they're doing is definitely not working what are your thoughts mm. well yeah i will start cleveland at right guard but i, I will start rosengarden I, I will put rosengarden there because rosengarden looks to be the future for the baltimore ravens now um he could be the future for the baltimore ravens at right tackle or he could just be a placeholder at right tackle until ronnie stanley is gone then he can move over to left tackle so he can play both sides so he has that advantage and that versatility so we could use him wherever but that's who i would start about justin tucker next question came from i bleed purple he said i guess you could say this is my rookie season when it comes to asking your questions and i just became a fan over the season i found about i found you uh through tom grassi oh shout out to my guy tom Grassi. this man got seven hundred thousand subscribers but tom grassi he, he's good people man like he's really really good people um, he's somebody that I remember when I was going through my whole little YouTube thing with the demonetization and I hit him up and I was thinking, oh, this dude, he probably ain't going to probably whatever. Cause we had worked together before like years ago and I was like, oh, he, but he, he, he hit me back and he looked into it and he did what he could do to help. Um, he looked out and of course with him, uh, him having us represent the Baltimore Ravens on his, uh, his 32 and 30, uh, well, no 30 and 30. Because it's 30 stadiums Because yeah The Chargers and the Raiders They share a stadium And the Jets and the Giants Share a stadium So 30 and 30 Where he was going to 30 NFL stadiums In 30 days But he had us Do the representation For the Baltimore Ravens It was an honor It was a privilege So I was like Yeah I'll fly up there For that Of course Tom Thanks But yeah he, He's super super Good people Great people But um Shout out to him He's he, he been killing it man So I'm happy for him uh, just all the success that he's been having. So shout out to Tom Grassi, man. Uh, anyway, continuing, he said, okay, time to get serious. I watched your last video and what the other Team Keep It Clean members thought about Coach Harbaugh. But I want to talk about Justin Tucker. It's not like Justin to miss field goals. Sure, everyone makes mistakes, but because of how long he has been in the league and what a heck of a run he's been on, I come to you, Engraven, asking you this. After this season, do you think it's time for Nine to hang up the jersey? Ooh. Wow, that's a powerful question right there. Do you think do we think Justin Tucker should retire? Wow. No. I, mm -mm. No, if he wants to keep kicking, though, let him kick away. Now, if he keeps missing for the Ravens, which hopefully he doesn't, then the Ravens may need to move on. If, if he's, like, just, again, still missing, a bunch of kicks, Ravens, mean that might, they might have to kick him to the curb. As sad as that would be. I think this this guy, I think this offseason we're going to see some significant changes with Baltimore Ravens. Like we haven't I remember before there would be like every year there would be somebody really significant on the Baltimore Ravens who would get released. 
They, they used to happen before every year. It hasn't really been that like that recently. But this offseason, oh, yeah, I think it's happening for sure. Marlon Humphrey, I think he's a huge candidate to be one of them people. Mark Andrews, I think he's a huge candidate to be one of them people. And if Justin Tucker starts missing like a lot, then I think he could be on that list as well. Next question came from my guy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good, bro? It's your boy, Flirt Nowinski, back again. Hope all is well with you, my brother. Hey, everything is good. I hope everything is good with you. He said, in response to my last question from subscribers, everything was going well, promotion and all, until it wasn't. I lost my brother on my birthday, then my other brother three months after, the, but I'm back and out of that dark place. Oh, man. I'm sorry to, to, to hear about that, man. Dang. Really so sorry to hear about that, man. I, I appreciate you um sharing that with us. And I'm I'm glad that you doing you doing all right, man. But dang, that's sorry, man. Um he said the answer to our right tackle problem. It's very clear that the Ravens have been historically bad at playing players out of position or making terrible situational calls, like having an elite running back playing back up to one that was darn near on a bubble last year, LOL. No shade. Or being up in the game and breaking the number one rule in football. If you're up, you tote the ball. But our answer right at right tackle Oh, this guy. He said our answer at right tackle is Justice Hill. You seen him stand up, stand up, Chris Jones, uh, multiple times and block uh, him how Roger Rosengarten was blocking Mac Max Crosby. Just a little dark humor for us, team. Keep it clean, aka team pacemaker. LOL. Okay, I, okay, I appreciate that. All right, let's get to it. He said, but no, all jokes aside, bro, that was disgusting mismanagement of players and having your best five out there. But I wasn't joking about having a running back out there blocking and is is the king. Isn't the one, so so be it, uh, etc. He has to bite that bullet, which brings me to my question. Well, first off, Fire Harbs is clear as day, same thing every year. Time mismanagement, terrible calls. I know he's not the OC, but listen, bro, if I'm with you at a game and I see you doing something out of place, guess what I'm going to do? Hey, bro, don't do that. He's a head coach, right? That's a great analogy. That, that's an amazing analogy, and it's so simple and it's so relatable. That was perfect. He said, but to my question, of course, it's fire hard, but I got a hot take. We all love EDC, but do you think he could be the problem? He's the one hanging on to Hobbs after getting slapped in the face by him multiple times on multiple occasions. Not only that, if you scroll back, I'm talking about years ago. Ronnie was considered a bust until Lamar King. Was he? Well, no, I don't think Ronnie was ever considered a bust. I don't remember that at all. But anyway, he said, um, how soon we all forget. Aside from his health, Lamar gets there. His stock shoots to Pluto. Uh, and one of my questions from subs, I say trade that man. Teams were offering multiple picks. No, they keep him. He gets hurt a bunch of dead money and has been living off Lamar's legs ever since. They love picks. Uh, that was the time they could have at least tried to solidify the offensive line. Mm. They have a player that turned a top five pick teams into a playoff team generational something no one has ever seen and has uh, seen how other franchises over the years mishandle mobile quarterbacks so he knows the answer protect him but he doesn't do it mm. this year you can definitely say that uh the way that they went about offensive line he said it really blows my mind bro it's not just flipping stanley they could have went out and got uh free agents anything uh, it was proven free agents he goes and gets morgan moses lol hey they traded for him traded for him from the jets then they traded him back to the jets they said all right thanks Jets, for the couple years see you morgan and uh then he said he let go of orlando brown jr and guess what he could have brought him back what twice no nah, we're going to let lamar make a highlight or die back there plenty of proven free agents throughout the years and then none of them i don't care what the media says everybody wants to play for lamar uh, specifically especially linemen look how much money he got all these linemen over the years huge mismanagement of talents and assets here yeah something we always say um we see a lot of teams do it when the quarterback's mobile they'll be like oh we ain't really got to invest in offensive line like that the quarterback can just make people miss. Uh, so no shot of the wide receiver room, but we don't have a super high-paid wide receiver. Why not get uh, somebody on the offensive line? Our running back room has been homegrown for the most part. We don't have a highly paid running back. Well, we have the king that we don't use, so we could have kept Gus. Another mismanagement of assets and talent. Why not get a line? I don't think they could have kept Gus. Um, I don't think Gus would have wanted to resign with the Baltimore Ravens. They ain't, they ain't respect Gus Ellis. They didn't treat him like a number one running back. He wanted to be a number one running back. I mean, well, now I don't even think he's a number one running back with the Chargers. But I think for Gus, it, it would be best for him to just be in a new situation where he get more of an opportunity. But, I mean, J.K. Dobbins has been killing it, so I ain't really heard about Gus. So I don't know what he got going on over there. He said Niners have uh, CMC, Debo, Brandon, George Kittle, and an elite offensive line. Like, what are we doing here? That's such a great comparison. And Trent Williams making a lot of money. Debo making a lot of money. Brandon Ayuk. Just got paid. Uh, George Kittle, he been paid. Now, they haven't paid their quarterback yet, but they be paying a lot of people. Now, I know 
going into next offseason, they're supposed to be like way over the cap or whatnot, but they'll figure it out. Well, yeah, 49ers, they be having some rosters, boy, for real. Anyway, uh, he said, I can go down the list. Chiefs cheat a lot, but guess <laughs> He said, Chiefs cheat a lot, but guess who has an elite offensive line? Guess who they said, who said, hey, Tyreek is out. Uh, QB is generational. Long as he has time, he'll make somebody something, somebody into something so you can walk. Uh, they did. Making nothing into something is what Lamar does with no offensive line. Imagine if he had one. That's such a great point. And we know that um, how dangerous Lamar Jackson is, just as a player in general. But when his offensive line, like when they hold up, it's scary. And we've seen it time and time again. But anyway, continuing. He said, um, sorry for the rant, brother. I'm just fed up. Honestly disgusted. And like I was after the diabolical mismanagement um on the timeouts and the first challenge because I already knew how it was gonna go. I'm out. Like, no, bro, I have never left a Ravens game before the clock hit zero. I literally got up and walked out. Oh yeah, he was tired, tired of the Ravens. 